Welcome to Watch Me Code. If you've been following along with the last few episodes, you should recognize this dashboard that I have up here. This is running off of my live production data from Keen.io, showing me the downloads by day, downloads by device, and downloads by day of week for the episodes in Watch Me Code itself. Now, as part of developing this, one of the goals that I had was to create a full administrative website, not just this simple little dashboard, including the ability to actually upload and manage episodes directly inside of this application, instead of what I'm currently doing, uploading episodes directly to AWS and then running that little script that we wrote so many episodes ago to load data from S3 into the MongoDB database. So now we're at the point where I think my dashboard is generally good enough to move forward and I want to get to the point where I can at least add an episode directly through the website. I want to get to the manage episodes here. So what I'm going to do in the next few episodes is walk you through the process of using a few modules and the express application that we've been building to create a simple little upload form that will allow you to select a file, choose any file from your computer, hit upload, have it send to Amazon S3, and then once it's done uploading, it'll redirect you back to some kind of page on your site to say that you've uploaded the file successfully, but also to give you the ability to insert that file information into your local database so that you can effectively manage the uploads to your S3 bucket. Now, the really interesting thing here, at least in my opinion, is not that we are uploading a file to S3, but how we're uploading the file to S3. Instead of using the Amazon AWS SDK, we're actually going to be using the HTTP REST-based API. And we're going to do that for a very specific reason. And if I look at some of the documentation here in AWS for browser-based uploads using POST, there's a little diagram that kind of illustrates exactly why we're going to be using the REST API instead of the JavaScript-based SDK. And that is, I really don't want to have my web server involved in the file transfer itself. I don't want the, the server that I'm running, my Heroku instance or whatever I'm using, to deal with the file that the user is uploading. I want the user to post the file directly to the S3 bucket. That way, I don't have to worry about all of the bandwidth, all of the processing needs, all of the streaming, all of the potential complexity of my code being in the middle of the transfer to S3. Now, I know a lot of services out there do upload things by proxy through their own service, and that's great. If you want to do that, go for it. I don't particularly want to do that, though. I like the idea of uploading the file directly to S3. So I'm going to take the approach of using the HTTP-based API and posting the file directly to the S3 service. But there are a few challenges in doing this. We can't have this wide open free-for-all allow anyone to upload anything S3 bucket. That would be a terrible idea. You would end up with all kinds of horrible things being uploaded to your S3 bucket. So we do need to lock down the, the S3 bucket, and we need to make sure that our code can do the post, that people that are logged into our administrative website can click on Manage Episodes and have this simple little form to select a file and click Upload, and actually have it post securely into that bucket in a way that prevents other people from being able to do this. So over the next four, five, six episodes, we're going to dig into the HTTP post options and, and capabilities of AWS, starting with reading some of the documentation here and, and walking through this very briefly. Then in the next episode, we're going to start digging into the real code, taking it one step at a time, showing you how to actually build this little sample application first, and then bring in the code that we build here into the admin dashboard website so that we can upload files directly and have them stored in our database. So hang on for the next episode where we'll start looking at some of the documentation for S3 and the HTTP-based REST API, and we'll get things uploading into S3 pretty quickly here. Thank you.